Hello, world! Since it was added into the game, Kerbin's analog of our own moon, in game referred to as Moon, has always been a tantalizing target for new and experienced players alike. It is usually considered a player's first major mission and first major milestone to land there. But how do you do it? How do we get to the moon in Kerbal Space Program? Well, let's figure this out together. Let's say we're starting from a parking orbit 100 kilometers in altitude. What do we do to get there? Well, first things first, we have to get high enough. As I talked about in previous videos, the most efficient way to transfer between two altitudes is by performing a Haman transfer. We simply need to burn prograde and push our apoapsis up to the moon's altitude. Then, we can simply burn prograde again at our apoapsis to get back into a circular orbit. However, it's not this simple. If we do that, we would simply be matching the moon's orbit and would never actually meet it. We need to time our transfer so that the moon is at the same spot we are when we reach its altitude. There are three different ways to figure out the timing. By testing, math, or by manipulating the maneuver nodes. The testing method would simply be to perform a transfer and see how off we are, then compensate in another mission. So, while we do that, let's talk math. We need to time our transfer so that we meet the moon when we hit our apoapsis. How do we do this? Well, first of all, you have to consider the fact that it takes a period of time to travel from where we perform our burn to apoapsis, and during that time, the moon is traveling through its own orbit. If we can figure out how long it takes us to travel that distance, we can consider it as a fraction of the moon's orbital period to find out how far the moon has moved in its orbit. The equation for the orbital period of satellite is as follows. t equals 2 pi times the square root of a cubed over mi where t is the orbital period in seconds, a is the semi-major axis, and mi is the standard gravitational parameter. Well, in the case of our transfer orbit, it has a periapse of 100 kilometers and an apoapsis of 11,400 kilometers, meaning our semi-major axis is 6.7 million meters. And according to the wiki, Kerbin's standard gravitational parameter is 3,531.6 million cubic meters per second per second. So, doing the math, we get an orbital period of around 58,000 seconds. Since we only want the time it takes to get from periapse to apoapse, we'll cut that in half to get 29,000 seconds. According to the wiki, Moon's orbital period is 138,984.38 seconds. So, in the time it takes to get there, the Moon has traveled through about one-fifth of its orbit, or about 75 degrees. This means we should start our burn when we're 180 minus 75, or 105 degrees behind the moon in its orbit, so we can intercept the moon. We could have just moved around our maneuver node to figure that out, but that's not nearly as cool, is it? Now, when you go to start your burn at around 105 degrees behind the moon in your orbit, you may notice something. The moon is just rising above the horizon. What a neat little coincidence. So, you don't need to pay attention to angles or anything when you're going to the moon, you can just wait until the moon rises above the horizon, and then start your engines. Now, if you So now that we are on an intercept course with the moon, what do we do when we get there? Well, if you don't act fast, you'll leave the moon's sphere of influence and fall back into Kerbin's gravity well. Or even worse, get slingshotted off into a solar orbit. You need to slow down to actually be captured by the moon and stay in orbit. To do that, you should wait till you're at the closest point to the moon and burn retrograde until you find yourself in an orbit. From there, you have tons of things you can do. You can start a space station or do some science. You can even head on down for a landing. That's up to you. What we learned today about timing our transfer orbits and orbital periods, etc., can be applied to get to any celestial body in the game, be it the moon, Minmus, or even other planets like Duna, Eve, or the Julian system. Now that you know the basics, maybe you can figure those out for yourself. Or you can always come back here for more help. But that's all for this time, and I will see you out there.